Hi, today I'll be talking about tennis rackets, how to select and demo them the right way. There's a vast number of rackets offered by various brands, so when shopping for a new racket, it can be daunting. The good news is that most manufacturers make good frames. It's a matter of finding the right racket that suits your game within the brand's product lineup. So let's take a look at three main categories of rackets. All right, let's go inside. All right, so the first category is game improvement. Now these type of frames would be for a beginner to intermediate level player. And typically these will have a large head size, a thick beam, and it's pretty light. So it'll allow these type of players easy power with less effort. And of course a large sweet spot. All right, so next we have the player frame. Now these are typically for an intermediate to advanced level player. So it's on the other end of the spectrum compared to game improvement rackets. So on these, you typically will have a smaller head size, a uh, pretty thin beam, and they're typically uh, heavier frames. So these offer more precise control since these type of players don't really need the power. And finally, we have the tweener frame which is for intermediate players, but can overlap into beginners and advanced players also. These frames uh, fall within the mid range of weight and head sizes. So we have varying rackets of all kinds that you can select from. So this again would be the largest category of rackets that you can choose from. So now that you know the three main categories of frames that's offered by various brands within their product lineup, the next step is to see a certified racket advisor or stringer that can help guide you in the process of finding a new frame. But let's say for example, you need more guidance and well, I hope in this video I can help. So let's take a look at three player categories to figure out how to proceed. Each category presents unique challenges and players within these categories have different needs. I hope you got that. The first category is the beginner and you're a first time buyer and you're starting from square one. So I'll provide five tips or guidelines that you can follow when trying to figure out what would suit your game. Number one, head size. It's essential to take in consideration the size and the age of the player. Players who are still small or petite that are still building strength, for instance, will have different needs from someone that's larger or has more power. All right, so let's say if it's a petite player or someone that's maybe 60 and over, you might want to consider a head size that's uh, maybe 107 to a 120 head size. These will offer more power with less effort and of course a larger sweet spot. Now let's say if it's a young adult or a middle aged player, then that's when you can consider a head size that's uh, typically like a hundred to maybe a 105. So these will provide a little bit more control versus power. Number two is weight. The general rule is to go with the heaviest racket that you can swing comfortably, play a couple of sets and not get tired. And when you go into a shop, sometimes you might pick up a light racket and it might feel really good as you're swinging it around, but you really want to make sure that you get a racket that's going to be stable on the court and protect your arm because a heavier racket will absorb more shock. Number three, stiffness. Now stiffness is something that you won't be able to see on a frame when you're in a shop looking at it. Uh, a good resource though is Tennis Warehouse. And if you go to the racket section, they have a full listing of all the specifications. So what you wanna look for is the RA number. And that RA ranges from usually 55 to 75. So if you're at 65, you know you're somewhere in the middle. Now what does stiffness do? Well, a stiff racket will provide you more power with less effort, but as a result, it does sometimes place more stress on your arm. Whereas a flexible frame will provide a little bit more control and be more comfortable on your arm. Number four is string pattern. Now string pattern is the number of strings that you have on a frame that run vertically, which is the mains, and horizontally, which is the crosses. So there are two types. One is an open and one is uh, a dense string pattern. So in an open, like this one, 
Uh, typically you'll have 16 mains and either 18 or 19 crosses. So with less strings in the frame, the spacing of the string is wider apart. So by having that, you'll have uh, easier power and it's easier to produce spin, assuming you have the right technique. Now on a dense string pattern, you're looking at strings uh, like an 1820, that's a typical dense string pattern. It's just the opposite. You have a little bit more control, but it takes more effort to produce power and spin. And finally, number five is swing weight. Now swing weight, we're getting really technical here, but it's important to know that it has to do with how the racket maneuvers and most people can feel that. And what I mean by that is um, if there's a lot of weight towards the head of the racket, it'll tend to feel like it's less maneuverable. So I have an RDC here that can measure that. And um, I know that this one is high already, but I'll go ahead and take the reading so you can see what it's doing to take that measurement. But when you have a racket with a high swing weight, it provides more stability and more power, but it, again, it's less maneuverable. So this one's coming in at 330. And then I have a second racket here. I'm gonna go ahead and compare the swing weight measurement. And with a racket that has a lower swing weight will be more maneuverable and allow for higher racket head speed because you can whip it around, but it's a little bit less stable and less powerful. So this one's coming in at 300. So that's quite a big a bit of difference between a three, 330 and a 300. Most uh, competitive players can probably tell when it's 10 units of difference. Um, not so much a beginner player, but um, sometimes they could. So anyway, that's swing weight. All right, category two is the recreation or competitive player. Now you're no longer a beginner, but this category can also be called the overhaul category for some of these scenarios. One, you could be playing with a racket that was given to you, but was never really ideal for you. Two, you made the mistake of buying the wrong racket and wasn't really right for your game. Three, you're becoming more serious about your game. Four, you're noticing discomfort in your arm or you're recovering from an injury. Five, you're changing your game and you're trying to add more power, spin, or control. And number six, you're in a slump and you're looking for a new racket to make tennis fun again. Whatever your scenario might be, an overhaul could be the right solution. Here are two tips that will help guide you in the right direction. One, decide on a goal for improving your game or your playing experience. Then two, consult with a certified USRSA stringer, master racket technician, or professional racket advisor. They can help compare your goal with your current racket and string setup. Then from there, they can help narrow down the rackets you select to demo. More on demoing rackets later. Category three, the competitor. You play competitively in leagues or tournaments and have been using your current racket for over two years or maybe have restrung it over 25 times. Now, if you're loyal to a brand, it might be just a matter of upgrading to the latest model or maybe you wanna to switch to something comparable in another brand. Now that I shared with you about tennis rackets and player categories, you might be still confused and a little overwhelmed, but it doesn't have to be. I've compiled a list of three tips that will help you with the demo process. One, consult with a local dealer. If there is none in your area, check online sites like Tennis Warehouse where they do offer a demo program. Number two, request for a demo in your grip size. If it's not exactly your size, you can always use overgrips to increase or decrease your grip size. And number three, if possible, have the demo strung with a similar type of string and tension as your current racket. Using a demo as is can skew your demo experience, adding variables that make it difficult for you to compare it to your current racket. Now it's time to test drive the racket you've selected to demo onto the court. I always tell my customers to allow a week where they can play three or four times where they can get through that honeymoon stage when trying a new racket. Never go by first impression and always allow yourself to get a true assessment of how the racket will feel. All right, so here are three steps on how to play test a demo racket the right way. 
For step number one, I always start off by hitting with your current racket first and then immediately after switch to the demo racket right after. This will allow your muscle memory to feel immediately how the demo racket performs. So for step one, I'm going to have a ball machine. I'm going to be using a ball machine and creating different scenarios where I can break down all the strokes and really get a lot of reps and experience how the racket behaves in my hand. Now, if you don't have access to a ball machine, you can have someone feed balls. All right, so I'm gonna create a scenario where I'm trying to test the feel of the racket. I'm gonna use my current racket, which is a Prince Phantom 100G, and then I'll switch off to the new ATS Tour 100 310 version. So I'll give myself four tries and we'll see how I do. That was kind of funny that that happened. I did my four attempts with my racket. I couldn't get it in. And I got the first attempt with the new racket. Talk about the honeymoon phase. All right, step number two. You now want to progress to live balls. So you'll need to get someone that you can hit with and try to create some structured points. And what I mean by that is uh, you want to allow yourself to tailor game-like situations to assess what the racket would feel like in competition. Finally, step number three, you now want to play a practice set or possibly use it in a match. What you want to do is determine if you can trust the racket in pressure situations. In today's video, I hope I shed some light on the three frame categories, the three player categories and how they relate to each other, and how to demo rackets the right way. Now, if you still have questions about tennis rackets, please leave a comment below and I'll be happy to get back to you. If you live in the state of Hawaii and would like to demo a Prince racket, I'll be happy to consult and recommend a racket that best fits your needs. I'll even ship it to you. To get more information, please check the video description below. Thanks for watching. Play with Aloha and let your strings play.